Yeah, welcome back to Python application programming. Last session we were discussing about dictionaries, right? So we will continue that session now. Yeah, last session we had discussed about dictionaries and also we compared that with the list, right? So continuing that, so here it is a comparison between the list and a dictionary. Now we look at uh, whenever we talk about list, uh, the elements can be of any order, elements can be of any order and uh, the indexing is or how do I access an element in the list using the concept of indexing which starts from 0, 1 and so on. Right? Coming down to dictionary, it is also a collection where elements are of different type, elements are of different type, content are of different type but only thing is how do I access an element. In dictionary, we do not use the concept of indexing, we use the concept where we have a label. So, for every value that we store, we attach a label. So, this is an example uh, comparison between the list. So, how do I create an empty list? Yeah, I have a list uh, method with braces with no parameters here. So, this is our empty list. Similarly, how do I create an empty dictionary? Yeah, this is how we create an empty dictionary. Second point, how to add an element into your list? Because uh, elements in the list are accessed using indexing. So, in the case we cannot directly insert an element using the indexing, we need to use a function called append. So, we wrote the list dot append 21. So, we are inserting 21 into the list. Similarly, uh, using append we are inserting 183 into the list. But when you come down to dictionary, how do we insert? As this is not uh, following the concept of indexing, so a label and a value or key and a value is used. So, we call dictionary the label that we have given or the key and then the value. So, this both key value pair is stored in the dictionary, key value pair is stored in a dictionary. Now, how do we identify because they are paired right. So, in the case we will have a key colon value. So, this is our key value pair. So, in our example key is nothing but age and value is 21. So, similarly the second value that we are adding to a dictionary is what course with a value 182 right. So, in that case these are the methods how to add a element into a dictionary and how to add an element into the list. Then we will print the list. So, you will see that you have a square bracket and the values 21 and 183. But when you come down to dictionary it is the concept is something different right. Print the dictionary. So, you will see that the first element was age with a value 21, the key was course with a value 182. But when you look at the print that is happening, we are getting first the second key that we updated that is nothing but course with a value 182 and the first element what we updated is coming as a second that is age with a value 21. So, now this examples indicate that in the list ordering is maintained but when we come down to dictionary the elements in the dictionary will not be maintaining any order. So, now after I print this say for example again I call DAD print DAD. So, may not be the same sequence age can be first and course can be second. So, the ordering does not matter at all here. So, ordering is not considered in terms of dictionary. And how do we access? Access remains same, right. So, list of 0 will give you the first element in the list. In our example, it is uh, 21 and what we are doing? This 23 we are updating onto list of 0. So, in that case, I am modifying the first element to be 23. Now, when you print it, you got the new value 23 and 183. Now, come down to this concept. We have a dictionary and what are we doing? Age with a value 21. Now, I am modifying the age which was 21 to 23. So, we are copying that for this particular label value we are updating that as 23. So, now look at when we print it. When we print it, we have a course 182 which is no, no modification. But when it comes to age, the new value 23 is reflecting here where the old value is updated with a new value 23. So, when you look at the differences, one, adding an element in the list is up, append function, but adding an element is as usual where we have a key and a value. Second, the elements in the list, the way we add will be maintained. So, ordering is maintained, but in terms of elements in the dictionary, the ordering is not maintained where the first element is this second element. But when I look at display, second element is displayed first and then the first element is the second element. So, the ordering can be anything in our dictionary. Now, the same example with little more uh, detail showing that what is a key and a value. Now, 
when you look at the list what we have we have added first element 21 183 so first element 21 183 but we are not talking about anything like a key here so the key in our case list is nothing but our indexing right so which we as a programmer we are not doing any modification here but when it comes to dictionary i create a label attach a value create a label attach a value label is also identified as a key so key with a value what is our key age is key with a value 21 age key with value 21 course with value 182 right what is the uh, dictionary uh, name that we have given ddd so which is nothing but ddd here similarly what is the name that we have given for the list lst and this is our lst now when you look at occurrences here first occurrence second occurrence they remain as it is but here occurrences have changed first element we added was age next we added was course and how it will be displayed we do not know at all right? so going further now how did we identify that it is a list or how do you identify that now it is a dictionary right so recall we wrote anything in a square bracket with a comma all these are the elements and put together this collection we identified as a list right now when it comes to dictionary there are slight changes right so one curly braces will have and the elements are pair what is that pair key and a value pair key and a value pair so now we understood that in the previous example also or you can look at this example also right so where where we have one this is the key one value one key two value two key three value three and how are they separated with a colon and how the pairs are separated with a comma and all these are enclosed in open curly braces and the close curly braces so this becomes our dictionary right so and uh, do we have an option of uh, creating an empty list definitely yes do we have an option of uh, creating an empty dictionary that is also very much appropriate so how do i create so we use a keyword called list and dict right in our previous example if you recall this is our empty list this is our empty dictionary so as as list has that facility of creating an empty list dictionary also has a facility of creating an empty dictionary so if you look at so we have created a dictionary with a name as jjj and where we have the members inside that with a key value pair and we are displaying that and you can look at that the way we are inserting is different the way we are trying to get the display is totally different right so our rings are changed next you have o o o with a curly braces without any content inside this so without any content so in the case you do not have any key value pair so when you print you get an empty list empty dictionary sorry you get an empty dictionary right as you do not have any key value pair right so we have an option of creating an empty dictionary like this also another option that we had what calling dist with a braces now so this will take as an example program right so now many a times we have come across a concept of trying to find out a solution for a particular problem what is that problem the uh, maybe the problem statement right so you have list of words you have list of words in our example they are names they are names now we want to identify what are the most common names now how do i identify so i have a name one here name two here name three here so all these are list of names now what am i looking at i am looking at okay by this name how many people are available this name how many of them are available and so on so what i am supposed to do i want to check with this name the initial value should be zero then next time i come down i check this is not the same name that has come earlier so the initial value of this again it is zero now when i encounter every name i keep adding one to that i keep adding one to that now when it comes to this yeah this name already i have encountered so what should i do i have to take the previous value which is one and add one to that because of this new occurrence so it becomes two here so similarly what i am supposed to do 
count all or find out how many names are there starting from here till the end and then what what will be my output right the output should be of the form okay name one how many how many occurrences are there so how many people are there name two how many of them but this we have already included here so the next name how many of them are there next okay next name how many of them are there so in that case we will have a names and the number of occurrences so this is our problem statement now we are supposed to find a solution for this right now there are multiple ways of finding a solution we look at very easiest way where we can use the concept of a list dictionary and get the problem solved now so this should be our output so it, it should look like something like this right so if i am doing it manually if i am doing it manually then what will i write i'll write the first name then i'll mark that one or if i go back here So here what will I do, I will write the first name then I keep marking them. So once I encounter I write one on this, then once I encounter I write this, then I encountered I wrote two, next time I encounter okay this is done, this is done, then okay so here two, then when it comes to okay this part the first time occurrences so it will be one, next time another one, then next time another one so if if in case if it is like 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 so i keep doing this manually and finally when when i cover up all the words then i land up saying that okay this is the name and this is the number of times that is occurring so if i do that manually it looks something like this where we have the name and the how many times it is occurring and so on right now we want this to be like a program so where we will not do manually, I will give this as a file, two options we have right, one I can give this as a separate line or put them inside a string or make it as a file content, read the content of the file and keep, uh, keep performing an action where you try to figure out like how many times that word is particularly occurring. So our objective is to what, convert this into a program where we will not worry about doing it manually and we will be able to find out how many times that is occurring. Now here how do I make use of a dictionary for this, how do I make use of a concept of dictionary for this. So if you recall dictionary is nothing but a collection where each element is of a pair like key value. Now what we did as manually we term what is the name of the person or maybe the word that becomes our key the value will tell here in our example the value will tell how many times this is occurring how many times it's occurring so it's nothing but a pair right it's nothing but a pair now one restriction that we had not discussed in dictionaries is when i have a key value when i have a key value key should always be an unique like example i can have a key a with a value 1 i can have a key b with a value 4 right and I can also have a key c with value 1 it is valid why in spite the value is same keys are different so it is valid what if I write c colon 4 it is invalid why because for the key you have two values 4 and 1 which cannot happen so it should be unique what should be unique key should be unique key should be unique so in that case keys are nothing but the words that I have in my file or in the line or in a text or in a string then the value is number of occurrences for my example right. So now how do, I, how do we solve this yeah one use we can use the concept of dictionary and use the concept of counting so that it gets value inside this right. Now here uh, instead of writing program we will try to look at write a small uh, code piece of code and try to check whether our concept works fine or not right. So now we will create an empty dictionary where the dictionary name is ccc then we will keep adding the values into it right. So as this is a dictionary the key equal to value is sufficient for us. So I will tell first time we are adding a word so it is 1, next time it is a different word so it is 1 again then we will print so we got with a key value, key value. Now we will try to add. So assuming that we got the word again, 
we got we expected this word and we got it so what we'll do the previous value plus 1 previous value plus 1 there's nothing but 1 plus 1 which will be updated to a same same key with a updated value like 2 so in our case it should print for csev1 and cwen as 2 so when you print that you'll see that csev is 1 still but cwen is 2 so which got updated right so this concept we can use to get this problem solved right so this will show us what we can update a value and store it here we can update the value and store it here so mutable or immutable it, they are mutable right so wherein we can update the value existing value can be taken we can change that value and store it in the same location because they are mutable in nature so how to solve that problem right how to solve that problem of what uh, trying to identify how many words are there and that word how many times it is occurring something like a histogram something like a histogram right now here if you go back how are we how are we achieving it right so we'll tell we are accessing a value in the dictionary we are accessing a value in the dictionary using the concept of key this is our key right this is our key so now what if key doesn't exist what if key doesn't exist in the dictionary right? so it's an error it's an error referring a key which is not available in the dictionary now an example is this so we have created an empty dictionary and uh, we are trying to print the value for this key where it's an empty dictionary so what is our dictionary name that we are given ccc so we have ccc and trying to access the value of the key csev where this key itself is not there in the dictionary so we have an error so what is that error key error indicating that this particular key is not available in the dictionary and uh, how do i make sure that this error doesn't occur right so now what you are supposed to do if there is a key you perform an action if key is not there you take an appropriate action right so what is happening here you are directly printing a key which is not available hence it is throwing an error now what should i do if key available then only you need to print if key not available then don't print that now how do i check right last class if you remember uh, we had used one operator called in right in terms of list so similarly we do have an operator called in in dictionary which where we can use so we'll say this is our key and this is our dictionary so we are trying to check whether this key is in this dictionary or not whether the key is there in the dictionary or not so when you when you look at this example ccc is a empty dictionary so i am trying to check a key inside an empty dictionary which should return me false so look at the output output is false so we are trying to check whether this key is in this dictionary it's not there hence the output is false in case if it was a key like example if you go back yeah we have a key here so i i'll check csev in ccc so in that case we'll check okay is that available yes so what will be our output boolean which is the value true so in this case it's not available hence we are getting that as a false so now why did we discuss about this right why did we discuss about this this was our problem statement we solve using this concept of dictionary and whenever i am trying to access update my value i should be very careful to check whether it is available if not then we get an error so error handling is also very very important for a programmer so all that combined together will become our complete program right? now here we have list of names here we have list of names like 1 2 3 4 5 now this example we can extend to a file also where the list of names can be thousand lakhs and lakhs and so on right? now we will take a simple example to understand more about that and then we can slightly modify this which will work for a real world situation now so here name if you look at what is names names is nothing but list of names that are available as a string separated by comma but look at that they are enclosed in square bracket which indicates that names is a list names is a list which contain list of uh, member names right 
Now, we will create one dictionary called count. Now, why this is required? Because I want to keep track, I want to keep track like first name, okay, okay. Uh, we will we'll take it like this. This is the name that we encountered first, then have we encountered earlier? No, this is the first time we are encountering. So, it, in that case it is 1. Next time I get a word, is that the same word that has occurred already? No. Is that the word already there? No. So, in that case we will keep 1. But when you come down to this, yes, we have already referred to that. So, in that case the previous value is 1, the new value is 1, we will add and make it 2 and so on. So, now after this what will I have? I will have the list of names and the number of occurrences. This will be list and this will be number of occurrences, number of occurrences. So, example, we will have CSEV, CSEV and in our example it will be 2, then we have CWEN, the occurrences are 2, then we have ZQIAN, the occurrence is 1. So, this is what is expected. So, now this becomes a key and this becomes our value. So, we want to store this as a dictionary, which will be easy for us. If I, I, I store them as a separate two different variables, it is very difficult to track it. So, best option is what? Use the concept of dictionary. So, we will say count equal to dict, that is we are creating an empty dictionary, then we have the names. Now, what I will do is I will check with the first one, I will check with second one, third one, fourth one. So, in the case I write a for loop. So, I will write for in for in what is the uh, list name it is names then I store each name in one variable each name first time it will be like this second time this third time ok we will go one by one. So, for name equal to names so first time CSEV comes here now what is our next step you have to check whether it is a first occurrence you add one to that if it was earlier available add one more to that now before you do that what are we supposed to check this is our dictionary if first time then I have to make it 1, if at a second time the same word is already there then I have to increment this by 1. So, we have two options, one if it does not exist then you make it 1, if it exists take the previous value, take the previous value and add 1 to that, take the previous value and add 1 to that. So, okay. so if name not in counts, name not in counts. So, in that case, if it is not there, then it is the first time I am encountering that word. What should I do? Make it as 1. So, we will say counts of name equal to 1. Else, else. So, in the case, already there is an entry in the dictionary, then I have to take my previous value and add 1 to that. How to take a previous value? Yeah, counts of name. Counts of name. What is counts? Counts is nothing but dictionary. So, names is nothing but a key that we have getting each time right then equal to counts of name plus 1. So, we are adding this. So, this is our previous value this is 1 we are adding and storing that again back to the same value. So, now this after first occurrence again it will go to for loop right. So, it will be next one next time not in names yes this is not there in the names. So, first time it will make it as 1 then go back here else part is not executed again it will go to for loop. Now, this is the one which we have encountered. So, now when it comes here name not in counts, no it is already there in the dictionary because we have already updated this as 1. So, now it will go to else part, else part is what previous value, previous value in our case is 1 plus 1 which is nothing but 2, 2 gets stored back to the same. So, now what are we doing counts of name which is nothing but CACV and the previous value was 1, 1 plus 1, 2 is stored back. So, in that case automatically for this entry in the tuple, sorry, for this entry in the dictionary, the key is CSEV, the value will be 2, right. So, this is how we are able to get that. Now, after you run completely, what did we get? We got CS, okay, one second, okay. What did we get? We get this particular key, it is occurring twice, this key is occurring once, this key is occurring two times. But when you look at the values that we have, the way we have processed, CSEV was the first we processed, but look at that, CSEV is the first that is being displayed. Second we process CWEN, but look at CWEN is the second, third that is being displayed when I print it. Now, this ordering we do not consider, right, because no ordering is applied in the dictionary. 
So, this is how given a set of words. So, here all these are words. I am trying to check what are the occurrences of the words. So, that based on this we will have a something called as a histogram where this is the word how many number of times that is occurring. Now, can we make it this particular uh, solution such that it is applicable for the real world right. So, what is that real world problem? Now, very simple. How are, from where are we taking the data? We are taking the data from a list, right, where we have a few set of words. But in real life, instead of having the list, we may have a file. We may have a file. So, in that case, the number of words may be coming from a file, but this logic remains same. But what am I supposed to change? What am I supposed to do? Right. So, now this logic remains same. So, this thing I have to change, right. Instead of having a list, we have a file. So, if it is a file, then we we know, right, what are the procedures. First, we will try to open a file, where we get a file handler. Then in the file handler, read each line, read each line and we pass that line. Now, once you read a line, line may have multiple words, line may have multiple words. Now, what we have to do? We want word by word, right. So, last session, we discussed there is a function called split there is a function called split where I do not pass any parameter. So, now the delimiter becomes one blank space, delimiter becomes a blank space. So, in that case all this will become an individual word, then I can take each word like this, add, keep adding them. If it is first occurrence, I will make it one. If occurrence is already there, then I take the previous value and add one to that. So, this becomes our real life problem. where the data is coming from a file, we need to do some kind of file handling here and then the logic remains same, right. But only thing is what? You have to split or maybe multiple splits, multiple splits. How? First you will open a file, read a line, read a line where line is what? Number of words put together. So, you are breaking that into a line, then this line is again split into multiple small small parts which is nothing but treated as a word, right, based on the function called split without any parameters. Why without any parameters? Reason if I do not pass parameter then delimiter will be a blank space. Delimiter in case of splitting will be our blank space. Okay. Okay. One special uh, function is available which is get a special function and which majority of the time we use this, right. Now, look at we have two things here name comma 0 what is counts right. So, we declare one uh, dict that is nothing but a dictionary. So, counts is a dictionary counts is a dictionary in our example. So, now I will sell counts dot get name comma 0 name comma 0. Now, what is this name? This name is nothing but a key this name is nothing but a key. Now, what get does? Get does two things for us. One, get if this key is available, get the value, whatever the value that we have. If not, initialize this. Now, we will take an example. I will tell if my name, okay, assume that this is our counts. So, this is our uh, dictionary and the name of the dictionary is counts. So, now what we will do? counts dot get name, name is nothing but c w e n, c w e n comma 0, comma 0, comma 0 are the parameters for get. Now, when I run this command or when I run this uh, particular function, then what do I get? Get counts, ok, this is the counts, get, what is the key? c w e n, so this will return 2, so what is the value of x? x value is 2 x value is 2. So, how did we get x value 2? Get name comma 0. What is the name? Name is cwn. So, it will check in the counts do we have cwn? Yes, it is there. So, get the value it will return 2. Okay. Now, so here we will tell name equal to ram 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 right comma 0 is my parameter. So, now counts yes we have ram Oh, it is not there. So, in that case, what will it return? x value is 0, x value is 0. 
right so for the name if it is available it will it will get the value if not it will return zero right so this is an example what if name in counts so if it is available then get the value fetch the value and store it in x if not available make it zero so this whole set of code we are able to get that using a single line using the function get so get is a function which helps us a lot right available fetch a value not available put a default value right so default value if key doesn't exist right so if the key exists then we get a value so if a key is already in the dictionary we get a value we are able to fetch the value right if key is not available then a default value what where is default in our case default value is zero default value is zero so get is the function which is regular regularly used instead of writing code like this we use a get function so combining all this can be a one complete program count equal to dict or pre okay before i go to this i'll try to show you what was our program where we are modifying this what was our earlier program where we are modifying it okay so now look into it count dictionary then you have a name for name equal to names then if not in then we are initializing that to one if it exists if it is inside then we are taking the previous value plus one okay now we convert this this code can be replaced by a get function that's what we are looking at right so see empty dictionary then we have list of names then for names in name look at that it's only one single line which gets the work done for us right so counts name equal to counts dot get name comma zero so in that case if it is available get the value if not zero but what we want why are we adding plus one to this right look at that if this is available then we get a value maybe the previous value is two so two plus one which becomes three very much appropriate what if this name does not exist then it is zero right because you zero plus one so we are getting that as one so if does not exist we get the answer as one if it exists what are the previous plus one will be our answer and what are we doing we are modifying that copying that back so counts of name equal to so our previous code this complete set of code this line these lines of code we have replaced with a one single line with a function called get so this code this is the line that we have replaced with a get function right now why are we adding zero because for whatever we get previous value we are we should add one to that and if doesn't exist we want the value one so we want the value one so hence we are supposed to add zero here as a second parameter to a get function so what we are doing is this right in in this example right provides a default value zero when the key is not there in the dictionary and just add one if it is available right just add one if it is available if not available we are adding one to that zero plus one is one if it is available a previous value plus one will be our new value okay so again uh, this program only right we have a complete program in this slide that's all right empty dictionary then names for count equal to name equal to get that name comma zero plus one print counts okay now uh, okay before i go to next slide what 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 will be our output right so counts counts is a dictionary so in that case our output will be key value pair with a comma right which will be the first key which will be the first pair whether it will be csev or cwen or zqin no we do not know it can be any occurrence right? okay now for the same program what are the program that we had a small modification in terms of the input in terms of the input so now what we have modified there it was hard coded in the program but here we'll try to read a line from the user 
So, we will tell raw input line. So, whatever he inputs, it will go to line. So, in that case, we have a complete line like this. We have a complete line like this, where we have multiple words put inside that line. So, what is the next step? Now, we what do we want? We want them to be separate because our objective is to count the number of words, count the uh, not exactly number of words, count the occurrences of the words, right? So, how do I make sure? So, I, I, I have this, I will split this. Split on what? I want a word, so blank space. So, I will use line dot split without any parameter. So, all those are stored in the words. So, all these words are here, right? So, we can print them. Then, for each word, for each word, that is what we use, for in loop, right? So, for each word in this list, pick them. If available, if available, take the previous value, add 1 to that. If not available, default 0 plus 1, right? So, look at that. The code remains same, small modification here, make sure that we are able to get the data at runtime. Here, we got data before runtime. So, all the data was available in the hard coded. But in this example, we are, we do not know what data is coming to our, right, processing. What is the content of line, we do not know. It will come on a runtime, on a fly where user can input the data at runtime and that will be stored in line. We split them into words and look for the number of occurrences of that particular word. Now, so you are trying to get data from a keyboard line by line. Now, we can modify such that I will make this as reading from a file, reading from a file, read line by line, then split all that will remain same by same, right. So, in the case, we can do a small modification where it can also work with a file handling. So, now, for this example, for this example, if this is the input, enter a line of text, if this is the input, then we are printing it, the dictionary, then we are trying to look out what are the exact occurrences of it. Like example, and is a key with a value 3, on is a key with a value 1. So, indicating what? 3 times it is occurring, and is occurring 3 times in this text, right. So, word occurrences, number of words that are being occurring. So, it is nothing but an histogram. So, uh, same thing, same word, text, this is about print word, uh, where is it? Yeah, here, we are printing words, this part and this whole thing is last line, print counts comma this, right. So, print counts, so we have here, all this is our dictionary, words, this is our text that we have, okay. So, now, uh, how the, how we can use something loops along with the dictionary, loops along with the dictionary. So, now dictionary is nothing but a collection of elements, right. So, in that case you can use a for loop, first element, second element, third element and so on. But how do I know that uh, what is my last element? We need not worry about that, right, because we know we have a concept of for in, right, for in. So, now I have a dictionary called counts. I have a dictionary called counts where I have these members, first key value, second key value, third key value pair. So, when I print, I have two things in processing, one is key, second one is value, key value, key value. So, now when you look at first time for key in counts, so in that case what is this part, right, always remember that when it comes to dictionary, when it comes to dictionary, the referencing indexing is always key, indexing is always key, not a value. So, in that case, first time what is key? CHUNC, next time FRED, next time JAN, it is not 14200, no, it is about the key. So, when you tell print, print this, comma counts, comma key. So, it will tell what is the key, what is this counts, we will look into it. Now, key, what is key? First time it will be CHUNK, second time FRED, third time JN, but as they are dictionary, it can be, the output can be different, right? So, JN, Chung, Fred, all these are keys. Now, what is counts of key, right? So, it will tell counts of CHUNC. So, it is nothing but a value. So, it will print 142 and 100, 142 and 100, right? So, how do I access the key value? Key, key 
how did i get this key because we are we have that in the for loop we have that in the for loop so how do i access a value dictionary of the key dictionary of the key right so we have dictionary of the index is nothing but key this key is nothing but the value first time second time third time okay i'll erase this the value is what this is our value value so first time this is our key second time is this third time is this appropriately these are the values which get printed so if you see the output these are the values which got printed right okay now there are multiple ways like a uh, uh, few direct access which will allow us to get the key which will allow us to get a uh, value which will allow us to get a, a pair together that's nothing but a key and a value right so taking this example we create a dictionary with same example we are we are taking that for whole of the session right first key value pair second key value pair third key value pair now look at what are we doing dictionary dot keys dictionary dot keys so we should get chang fred jan so you have that yes chang fred and jan h is available now next function dictionary dot value dictionary dot values values is the function so when you look at dictionary dot values we get what 1142 in any occurrence so you look at 100 142 we got it so now dictionary dot keys will give us the keys that are available in the dictionary dictionary dot values will give us what are the values that are available in the dictionary but order doesn't matter because order ordering will not be maintained there may be or may not be but we do not take into consideration the third important point is what dictionary name that is jjj in our case dot items so items indicates what element so this is one element second element and so on so what will be output of items it will print key value key value key value all the elements right so you look at that example key value key value key value and look at how they are displayed they are displayed in a square bracket which indicates that it's a list but key value items so they are together and what is the symbol that we are using this is the symbol so look at that this is the symbol now till now till now what we have encountered we have encountered one symbol called square bracket for list curly braces for uh, dictionary then we have a new set that is coming in right a new symbol and this is nothing but a tuple right so this is nothing but a tuple so what are tuples we'll cover that in a uh, subsequent sessions right so we have three special functions keys values and items so keys will give us what are the list of keys that are available in the dictionary values will tell us what are the values that are available in the dictionary and uh, the items item indicates that pair right where we have a key and a value key and a value and which is nothing but uh, a key and a value which is list along with that each pair is a tuple where we have a key value which is nothing but a tuple here now uh, the same example same example little more in uh, detail right so we have a dictionary with jjj right then we have uh, the key value all that is available now when i use a function items when i use a function items so we have a very good uh, function here this function will return two things for us one is a key second one is a value right so now what i can do here is i can separate them key and a value and store them in a two different variables i can store them in a two different variables now look at this concept for in good for in what is it the dictionary dot item so in your case i have a lot of key value pairs so first time it will be the first key with first value second key with second value and so on so now what i can do is every time it is taking one pair so i can store my key 
in one variable value in the other variable. So, what I can do here? We can store key in one variable and value in the other variable. Now, in our example, where is key stored? A, where is value stored? B, B, B. So, now when I run this code, assuming that, assuming that we encounter this as first one. So, Jan is stored at A, 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 100 is stored at B, B, B. So, we are printing A, A, B, 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 which is now Jan, Jan 100. Yes, done. Next time, we encounter this. So, this is A, 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 1 is B, 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 B. We got it. Next, the next uh, element, Fred with value 42, Fred with value 42. Or output, right. So, we have an option where based on the output of this, we will we'll be able to store them in variables. Like example, if this happens to be a key, then we have only one variable. If this example happens to be a function like values, it is still a one variable. If it is items, then we have two values here, two entities here. One is key, second one is value, where we will store that in two different variables. So, you look at the for loop here. So, for why we have written two variables here? Reason this jjj dot item, what is this jjj? It is nothing but a dictionary. Items as a function will return key and a value, where key is nothing but the key is stored in a variable aaa and the value is stored in a variable bbb. So, we are able to process that in one single shot using a function called items. Right? So, that is what two iteration variables. So, this item is giving us two different variables, right? So, at a time. So, it is it's identified as like two iteration variables. Now, uh, any guess like what this program is talking about, right? Recall with the sessions that we had discussed in our previous classes. Check. First one is talking about something raw input, second line is talking about something like open function, then handle dot read, then right. So, when you look at this, this is nothing but trying to get a file name from the user, ah, we are trying to opening a file. So, this is our file program. So, wherein we open a file, read a line, split that accordingly then create a dictionary so that why are we creating for this problem statement we wanted like there are list of words in this file there are list of words in this file and i want to figure out like okay this is word 1 how many times it is occurring like example 4 then word 2 may be occurring 3 times word 6 occurring 4 times and so on right all the words number of occurrences now in this what am i doing i want to check the which word has maximum occurrence like example in our case assume that it is 6 then I will tell 6 is the maximum count what is that corresponding word w6 right example right this is an example w6 so now or maybe not to have a confusion we will take specific like examples in the words so that we do not have any confusion there right now assume that there is a word called an and in computer, okay, oh, four words. Now, when we run the program, we got the histogram saying that an a n is occurring five times, and is occurring six times, in is occurring one time, and computer is occurring ten times, and so on, right? Now, when you compare all of them, this is the highest number, right? Highest number ten. So I want ten times it is occurring, and what is that word? That word is computer that world is a computer. So, now what should be our logic, right? Think about it. What should be our logic? One, we should get this data from where? From the file. So, we will have a file name, we will open the file, then after you open the file, you will read the line, line by line till you reach the end of the file, then after reading line by line till the end of the file, you take each line, split them into words, split them into words, then after splitting into words, apply the histogram concept where it where we discussed about dictionary counting the same logic we will apply after that what is our next step 
we do not want an histogram we want a word which has occurred many number of times or which has the highest number of occurrences so we need to have 10 with computer so we'll compare with this which has the highest one and the corresponding key corresponding key will be our final answer so we for the problem statement uh, trying to read from a file then break them into lines and uh, that line has to be split into words and then we will try to read like whether that word is existing if yes then how many times it is occurring we get a histogram but our objective is not histogram right just now I told you our objective is to find which particular word has the maximum ex maximum occurrences which word has the maximum occurrences so in our example if you look at we have given the text as a what the file name as word.txt in that there is a word called 2 which has 16 existences right so 16 times it is occurring but this happens to be the highest number of occurrences in that file but how do we figure out right what is the program for that right so we will take up that in the next session